us using Visual Studio to develop an application. Um, works well. And again, you can come over here and make all your changes and just attach to Unity, and you get all of these game object, Notice all of the autocomplete here, all of your methods, git, component. You can see everything here. If you forget code method inside of Unity, so we created a basic project, and we got a start method and an update. Start gets called on any game object, excuse me, any game object you're assigned to when that object starts up. Since these objects that are these code files that are assigned to game objects don't have regular constructors, use a start or an awake method. Awake gets called before start. Uh, awake typically used to uh, find other components within this game object. So for example, if I wanted a reference to um, a box collider, I could get that inside of my awake method. Void awake. Get component. So I'm saying, hey, on this particular game object, can you do me a favor and give me in code, a reference to that box collider, and then I can alter its properties in code. So very easy to do. Typically, you'll see that done in the awake method. Some folks do that in the start method as well. The important point here is there are no constructors. Uh, update gets called every frame. If your game's running at 60, times, 60 frames a second, this is going to get called 60 times a second. But one, one thing I want to show you with the Visual Studio Tools for Unity is Control-Shift-M. Think M for mono behavior. Control-Shift-M. So if I want to detect when whatever game object I'm on has collided with something, assuming I have set up physics for that object, I can say Control Shift M, and I get all of the Unity mono behavior methods. In other words, all the methods that Unity understands that it can look for uh, if certain criteria are met. So for example, I want to know when this object has collided with something. Now, if you know the met method signatures by heart for all of them, you can type them out. It's really uh, helpful having them. I forget them, yes, because there's some things get a little confusing. Like, for example, on trigger enter takes a collider, but on collision enter takes a collision object. So kind of remembering which one gets what when, I can just say OK, and it generates the method for me. Boom. I think it's funny, because when I, when I first started uh, coding, that was one of my big problems I was always having was the collision and collider yeah. methods. I couldn't, I couldn't exactly distinguish. I was like, why isn't this working? It was because they're so similar. Yep. But having that, that's that's a perfect example of why Visual Studio Tools just is it's awesome having all those definitions right there so you can just see them and, and click what you need and it just works great. And now notice uh, one one difference, uh, the Visual Studio Tools for Unity, they make this public. This does not have to be public for object oriented purposes. I want this to actually be private, so I'm just taking off the public. Um, from, a, from a functional standpoint, it doesn't actually matter either way. Behind the scenes, Unity uses reflection, a process where it can inspect its own code. And it, it will look to see if you have these particular methods implemented and call them if certain criteria are met. Uh, for example, in this case, it's when two objects that have a collider on them hit each other. It will look at those objects and look on the code on those objects and say, hey, do any of those objects have on collision enter defined? And if so, we'll call it now. So very, very easy. Again, I don't want to go through all the code methods here. I just want to show you the Visual Studio Tools for Unity and Control-Shift-M. Uh, also, a great feature of Visual Studio. Let's say I just kind of mess this all up, especially when you paste in code from the net. Control-K, and while you're still holding down Control, so Control, I'm holding Control down. I press K, and then like OK, and I press D. Formats my code. This is awesome for when you uh, download messed up code from the net. Uh, and this is one area I think uh, Visual Studio does a far better job than Model Develop and uh, Control KD. Model Develop you can format. I just like the formatting that Visual Studio provides a little bit better. All right. Cool. Let's talk real quick about some of the workflow that we use when we develop games. We start out with a game design document. Um, you'll find that folks, if they do game development for others, maybe that might be a statement of work instead of a game design document. A game design document uh, we'll get to in one second. Then we prototype out our level and characters, and we'll look at that here. Uh, and almost always, it's a mix of stuff that we create as well as other things from the asset store. Again, it's a very common thing that for professional studios to use a lot of things from the asset store. It might not be models, because they might be having their own artists like Matt, for example, create those models. Yep. Uh, but it might be other scripts, editor scripts to plug into Unity's interface. So you can extend the whole interface through scripts. Um, to make your own tool set inside of there. Yep. Um, you can get audio files. I mean, really, really cool stuff on there. I don't want to 
beat that to death. But uh, <laughs> So after we prototype, we commit to source control and repeat. And we'll look at source control here in one second. Let's talk about the game design document. Ideally, it's really good to start with one. This is the blueprint of your game. This yeah, can change. Every, every game that, that you design, you, you always just want to get in the habit of creating that initial game design concept, right? Just putting it down in black and white to kind of really give you a vision of the concept. And then from there, you can start adding your details like, you know, hiring artists or, or kind of sketching out like the different elements of the game that you want to complete. Um, you want to flesh out all the areas of how the game is going to work, how it's going to control, you know, what, what type of experience is the user playing the game going to get. Um, all that you really want to flesh out. And it's just good to have it in black and white because, you know, as something you start, to refer to, yeah, something to, to refer to. That's kind of your, you know, your, your. Are we on track? Yeah, are we on track? <laughs> yeah. Exactly, because you know you'll hear a lot of times in game development they call it feature creep, right? Where you'll get going, and, and Unity's one of these engines that you can really start going crazy and yeah. doing a bunch of really cool stuff. But that can be good and bad, right? It's like starting so, kittens, right? Yeah, exactly. You start here, you're like, oh, this is a cool feature. Oh, look at this. Exactly. Um, so it's <laughs> you can really start going off on a tangent, but you know those take time, yeah. right? And so yeah. at the end of the day, if you're trying to deliver a product, the one thing you want to do and, and just get in the habit of doing is keep it on track. And how you do that is with a game design yep. document, right? So, and there are times where you know you'll come up with a feature and absolutely we have to put this feature in the game, and that that's going to happen, and that's going to happen organically, especially in indie game development. But um, I would say more 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 times than not, you want to stick to that game design document just to keep you focused yeah. and on track. And plus, it's going to give you you'll know the vision right off the bat. You know what you're trying to complete. It's easy. Yeah, you easy to get, get lost goal. without one. Good, Absolutely. good idea to have one. Absolutely. Describes the gameplay, the mechanics, the mm -hmm. storyline. Uh, you'll see that some have a quite a long document, and that's fine. Uh, some folks prefer a single page. Think of this as kind of a resume. Some. Some recommend that a resume should be a single page, and there are others that say, no, if you have the experience, we don't care that you have a you know, 38 page resume. Absolutely. And there's a <laughs> three page of, resume. And if, if you're kind of unsure as to how to create a game design document, there are a ton of examples online. I mean, if you just Google game design document, you'll see a ton of templates that people have written, things you can download, just kind of like things to follow along when you create your own, your own game design document. Um, I, in fact, I, I have one here on my screen. This was just something I found online. And as luck would have it. Started to tailor it to. Uh, to this, to this, um, you know, to the game we're creating, but this kind of has some some key points you want to see in here. So you want to start with, you know, the title of your game, uh, game design document, and then put your your copyright information. Boring legal stuff. No boring <laughs> legal stuff. Exactly. Yep. And then from there, you know, all the things that are pertinent to your game, like your your game design, the summary, the gameplay, the Matt, mindset. Can you that font, font size a little bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. There we go. Um, Perfect. So yeah, you just wanna you wanna get in the habit of, of these are these are very important things that you, you're gonna have to have when you start creating your game. Um, you know, what is the game about? How's the game gonna play? Uh, getting into the te technical aspects of the game regarding the controls, the screen, the devices, uh, the themes of the game, uh, the flow of the game, and then start getting into the actual development, the pieces you need of the game. How many? You know, how long is it going to take? All that stuff, and you really want to define all those elements out, and it's just. Like we said before, it's just something really great you want to refer back to as you're creating your game. Uh, for example, for the for the Vamp Kid stuff, I'll just show you real quick. This was kind of some of the initial uh, art assets that we created to kind of get the vision across, right? And these are just doodles, right? These aren't anything crazy, but this is a good kind of starting point. Like, okay, we wanted to quit, create a quick game, trying to come up with an interesting idea for what we're trying to do. Sometimes we'll have coffee and ketchup on them. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> start start jotting down some ideas, right? Maybe, you know, throw in a little quick Photoshop rework on them just to kind of make them look a little better. And you can use that in your game design document, too. I mean, don't be afraid to throw sketches in there. It doesn't have to be like the, the you know, it's it's not a production piece. It's It's more of a it's a preliminary. Even if you're not an artist. Yeah, you don't have to be an artist. Exactly. Yeah. You just got to get your thoughts down. And that's kind of what I do when I'm creating games. You know, we thought, okay, we want to have this kid vampire who shoots fireballs and he fights zombies, right? What else is there going to be? There's going to be bats and skulls and coins, things like that. You know, you just want to start kind of getting those images down, making them work, throwing them into the game design document and getting that vision together. Uh, from there, you can even go in and prototype, uh, you know, what are some of the... Um, the level piece is going to look like, you know. So for here, we kind of sat there and said, "Okay, what kind of stuff do we want? We want platforms. Okay, we've got, you know, these kind of graveyard-esque platforms. He's going to jump on with dead trees, and we want castle pieces. He can jump on all that kind of stuff. So you just kind of want to eh, sit there and start, you know, kind of getting these elements down, and you know, take your time with it. You don't have to rush, right? I mean, if, you, if it's a really great idea that you want to do, take your time and just kind of put it all together. 
You know, so it, it, in theory, that's kind of where you want to start with the game design document. You want to start with sketches, an overall concept, and then you just want to start fleshing it out and putting it in an actual document, making it all make sense, right? Uh, getting all the elements you need, putting everything together. And, you know, it might seem boring, but at the end of the day, it's really, really going to help you, especially if you're planning on hiring out sources, getting a team together. This is a document that you can give to everybody on your team so everybody's on the same page. It's just kind of that really ultra, ultra important starting point for any project. Very cool. Yeah. All right, let me go back to... Let's jump around a slight bit here and talk about Unity standard assets. Uh, Matt's going to do some cool stuff with prototyping out the level. And uh, I want to talk to you about what Unity provides as a basis that you can start from. Now, there's lots of sample projects out there you can use, lots of stuff in the Unity Asset Store. You'll find some cool tutorials on their site you can use. Uh, the sample assets they provide give you something to start out with. In fact, this is what we we based our character on today. Yep. Uh, so let's look at that. There's two ways of getting the sample assets. The first is going through the Asset Store and Standard Server version update. Okay. Reload that. So notice, and there's two different versions. One is for Unity 4.6, and one is for 5, which we've been at 5 for a little bit now. If you download it from the Asset Store, you can pick and choose which little pieces that you want to bring into your project. If you, um, yeah, let me rephrase that, the other way around, actually. If you download them from Unity's website, and you install them from there, they show up as all these different pieces that you can pick and choose from. Uh, characters, cross-platform input, which we're going to look at today, and characters. Um, if you download it from the Asset Store, by default, is going to bring everything into your project, which is what this one is here. So if you want to look at how everything is laid out, download it from the Asset Store. So notice here we have a 2D character controller. Let's play this one here, and let me set maximize and play so you get the best real estate possible on your end. So if you want to see how they do the 2D animations here, how they tie this all together, all right? It's basic, but gives you a really good starting point. Uh, swap out the assets, swap out your images. If you want to look at, uh, for example, aircraft, jet, two-axis controller, or even AI, one that kind of flies itself around. They've come a long way. The last one was, the prior version was simply a uh, character controller, a third person, first person character controller. Now they've got a jet, now they've got a car. Yeah. Uh, cool particle effects here you can use in your own games. And you can take these assets, use these assets in your own games, of course. That's why Unity provides this to you. Um, we built what we're looking at today on character third person and character first person. So you'll notice they have this guy called Ethan and they give you some animations to start. Ethan can run around, he can jump, he understands some physics. Right, can't really go through the wall there. And then we have this free looking camera rig that follows him around here. Has some basic collision on it. Has some basic stuff on there, right? Kind of a, a wall avoidance there, so I can't get really trapped inside the wall. Basic stuff, that's what we use today. We essentially swapped out Ethan. Um, sorry, Ethan. <laughs> And then we customize the controller a little bit. So to make it a little bit better for a 3D platformer, still not complete, we're still working on it. So you'll find on, on the GitHub site that we're going to post, we'll constantly have revisions out there. There's also a first person controller here. And to use these, it's extremely easy. So granted, these are, these are fully set up scenes. But if you want to use these, let's do a new scene. I'll create a terrain. On that terrain, let me add just something so we can see it here. One of my favorite basic textures of all time, grass and rock. And under prefabs, prefabricated units that we can use in our game, the prefabs folder, if we look in here, uh, let's see, we've got, that's our sample scenes, standard assets, prefabs, under our characters, let's do a first person controller prefab. So we've got two different kinds here. One understands physics a little bit better than the other one. I'm going to use the first person controller here and move it up so it's not stuck in the middle of my scene. Literally drag and drop. Now we have a guy we can run around, press space bar, use all the standard ASDW keys, our arrow keys, and now we're just falling to our doom. 
Really, really easy to use to integrate. So those are the sample assets. Again, check those out. It's what we use today to start to level out. Um, in turn, we had Matt kind of prototype some of the stuff on his end. Yep. And then, so Matt, why don't you uh, take us over to some of the stuff on prototyping.